all my friends. Uh, welcome to my channel. We're in the book of uh, Swedenborg, Swedenborg Sampler. Um, in case you are just coming to this for the first time, Emanuel Swedenborg uh, died, I think it was 1772 or something like that, um, in 1700s, and he was a genius. He was a, uh, a, a miner, a, a philosopher, scientist, a inventor, um, uh, a uh, horticulturist, a uh, civil servant. Um, he was a Renaissance man of his time. He he excelled in in everything that you could mass sciences, um, you name it. Um, he was just you know just. He, he was actually followed by the news. You know, Swedenborg goes to Amsterdam or something like that. He was followed around. And um, so, you know, he he was a celebrity of his day, if you will, okay? And um, in his mid-50s, 55 years old, he had a his first spiritual uh, experience where he started off with dreams and then he actually started to, um, was shown different visions uh, from the Lord, and then actually uh, taken to different realms. And he wrote all about this. He did volumes and volumes of uh, literature, all in uh, Latin, okay? So these things have had to be translated and, and you know, brought over to America. And they were, and then they were kind of poo-pooed, uh, you know, and it just kind of went by the wayside. And then other people started to pick up on it again, and bring it out because, you know how, some churches are. They just want to squelch things that don't go along with their own theology. Okay, and so um, anyway, I I find him very fascinating. Find that he was a lover of of the Bible. He was he calls it the Word, uh, as I sometimes do myself, and um, he. Uh, <clears throat> Um, his father was a minister, Protestant, um, and um, in Sweden, if you were not a Lutheran, uh, which was a state religion, and you talked against the religion, you could be thrown in jail. So um, anyway, so that's just kind of a little rundown on him. And we finished uh, the sampler last time on page 206, and I just want to start, you know, with that. And... Um, the, uh, let's see, I fin I think I stopped the first, um, sentence here. Um, let's see, let me just go back up here a little bit. Let me just start here. All people who have inner level and an outer level. The inner level is called the inner self and the outer level is called the outer self. Nevertheless, someone who does not know, uh, what the, um, uh, inner outer selves are could believe that our inner self is a source of our thinking and willing and our outer self is a source of our speaking and action uh, these are indeed inner and outer aspects of us but they do not constitute the essence of our inner and outer selves the human mind is indeed commonly held to the inner self but in actuality the mind is divided into two regions one of the regions is spiritual it is a higher and, fur and further within. The other is earthly. It is lower and farther outside. Our spiritual mind focuses principally on the spiritual world. It deals with the things in the world, whether they are the kind that exist in heaven or the kind that exist in hell. Both kinds are in the spiritual world. The earthly mind, on the other hand, focuses principally on the earthly realm. It deals with the things in this world, whether good or evil. In our action and speaking, in, in, uh, uh, emanates from the lower region of our mind through a direct route. Uh, ultimately, however, it comes from the higher region of our mind, although the route is indirect because the lower region is closer to the senses in our body, while the higher region is far farther away from them. The division within our mind exists because we have created to be, we are created to be spiritual and earthly at the same time, and therefore to be human and not animal. Okay. And so 
These points make it clear that people who focus primarily on themselves and worldly things are external people, and they are um, earthly, not only in body, but also in mind, and people who focus primarily on things that relate to heaven and the church are internal people. They are spiritual in both mind and body, and they are spiritual in body as well because their actions and words come from their higher mind, which is spiritual, through their lo lower mind, which is earthly. As people generally know, effects come from our body, while the causes that produces those effects come from our mind. The causes shapes every aspect of the effect. It is obvious that the human mind has been divided into this way from the fact that people are able to pretend, to flatter, to be hypocritical, or to be, or to play act. They can agree with someone else, what somebody else is saying, and nevertheless view it as ridiculous. They do the former in the lower mind and the latter in the higher one. So these things enable us to see how we are to understand the statement that goodwill and good works are two distinct things. Um, wishing people well and treating them well, that is, that they are formally distinct, like the mind that does the thinking and willing in the body through which the mind speaks and acts. In fact, they are essentially distinct as well because the mind itself is divided into an inner region that is spiritual and an outer region that is earthly, as I said above. Therefore, the things we do come from our spiritual mind. They come from wishing others well or goodwill. If, however, they come only from the earthly mind, they come from a form of wishing others well that is not genuine goodwill. It can appear to be goodwill in an outer form and yet not be genuinely goodwill in its inner form. Goodwill that exists in an outer form alone does, does indeed present the look of goodwill but lacks its essence. The point could be illustrated by analogy with seeds in the ground. Every type of seed gives rise to a shoot, but those shoots are either useful or useless, depending upon their species. The same is true for spiritual seed, that is, for the truth in the church that comes from the word. A body of reaching grows out of the truth. A useful body of teaching is made out of genuine truths, unless one is made out of truths that has been falsified. The same thing applies to goodwill that is exercised as a result of wishing our neighbors well. Whether we wish them well for our own sake or for the worldly reason or for the sake of our neighbor in a narrower or broader sense. If we wish our neighbors well for our own sake or for the, a worldly reason, our uh, goodwill is not genuine. If we wish our neighbors well for, for their sake, for their goodwill is genuine. See um, many statements that address these topics in the chapter on faith, especially in the discussion showing that goodwill is uh, benevolent towards others and good works are terms uh, are good actions that result from benevolence and goodwill and faith are transient, transient and exist only in our minds unless we uh, unless when an opportunity occurs, they accumulate in actions and become embodied in them. Goodwill itself is acting justly and faithfully in our positions and our work and with people and whom we interact. Goodwill itself is acting justly and faithfully in our position and our work because all things we do in this way are useful to the community. And usefulness is goodness, and goodness is impersonal since, since, since it is our neighbor. And I have shown above our neighbor is not only individual people, but also a community and a country as a whole. For example, if monarchs led the way for their subjects by setting an example of doing good, if they want their people to live by the laws of justice, it, if they renew people who live that way, they will give all the people consideration they deserve. They keep their people safe from harm and invasion. They act like a parent to their countries and take care of the general prosperity of their people. These monarchs have goodwill in their hearts. The things that they do are good actions. Priests who teach truths from the word 
and use truth to lead to goodness, to life, therefore to heaven, are practicing goodwill in very important ways because they are caring for the souls of the people in their church. Judges who make decisions on the basis of justice and law, not because of bribery or because someone is their friend or relative, are caring for the community and for the individual and for the community because their decision influences it. To, to say um, obedient to the law and fearful of breaking it and for the individual because their decisions allows justice to triumph over injustice. Um, businesses, people who act with honesty without uh, fraudulence are caring for neighbor they do business with and so are workers and craftspeople when they do their work uprightly and honestly rather than falsely or deceptively. The same goes for everyone else, for ship captains and sailors, for farm workers and servants. This is goodwill itself because it can be defended as follows. Goodwill is doing good to our neighbor daily and constantly, not only to our neighbor as an individual, but also to our neighbor collectively. And the only way to do this is through practicing goodness and justice in our position and work with the people with whom we have interaction because these are the things that we do every day we do not uh, well, sorry when we are not doing them they still stay in our minds all the time we think about them and intend to do them people who who practice goodwill in this way become better and better forms of goodwill justice and faithfulness shape their minds and the practice of goodwill shapes their bodies over time because of their form they get to to the point where Everything they want and think about relates to goodwill. In the long run, they become like the people mentioned in the word who have the law written in their hearts. Jeremiah 31, 33. And such people also take no credit for what they're doing since they're not thinking about receiving credit for it. They're thinking about their duty. In their view, acting this way is the right thing for citizens to do. Nevertheless, we are completely incapable of acting on the basis of spiritual justice and faithfulness on our own. We all inherit from our parents a trait of doing what is good and just for our own sake or for worldly reasons. None of us hereditarily does these things for the sake of goodness and justice. Therefore, only when people worship the Lord function from the Lord while they seem to be functioning on their own, do they obtain spiritual goodwill and become saturated with it as a result of constant practice. Many people behave justly and faithfully in their jobs, and yet although they are doing works of goodwill in this way, they still have no goodwill in themselves. Their love for themselves and the world is in control rather than the love for heaven. If love for heaven happens to be present at all, it is under their other loves, like a slave under a master, like a foot soldier under a commander, like a doorkeeper standing by the door. Acts of kindness related to goodwill consist of giving to the poor and helping the needy, although with prudence. Because remember, he talked about if the person is evil, then you're contributing to evil. Uh, if, you, if the person really isn't good, you know, okay. So it is important to distinguish between the work-related acts of goodwill and incidental acts of kindness. Work-related acts of goodwill means those practices of goodwill that come straight from goodwill itself, since goodwill itself is a function of the work that we do, as I have shown just above. Acts of kindness, however, refer to helpful acts that are done outside of our work. They are called the acts of kindness because... We are free to do them as we please, and we do them, and sorry, and when we do them, the recipients see them as a kindness and nothing else. We do them according to the reasons and intentions we have in mind as benefactors. It is a common belief that goodwill consists solely of giving to the poor, helping the needy, caring for uh, widows and orphans, and making contributions to build, enhance, endow hospices, hospitals, hostels, orphanages, especially church buildings. Many of these actions, however, are not integral to the existence of goodwill. 
they are extraneous to it. People who consider good 